Hey, Spuddies, Potatabig Whiskey here, and welcome back to war. What is it good for? Well, it's probably good for expanding my empire. Now, our main objective is to blow up the city of Radom. We are also at war with England. I think Poland is probably my primary target here in this war. But let's just see, let's just see how it plays out. We'll see. We'll see you on the battlefield, sir. Now, we did just unlock exploration, which gives us access to the Merchant Republic government, as well as a couple of policy cards. I do think it would be good to move over to Merchant Republic. So I'm going to go ahead and make the switch. I'm going to pop feudal contract up into our military policies, make sure we have Republican legacy. And I don't think we're going for any builders right now. So I'm going to drop serfdom. Instead, I'll plug in natural philosophy for that little bit of extra science and Praetorium for the little bit of extra loyalty that it will provide me. Right, let's grab civil service and head up towards guilds. I think we generally, where do we want to go actually? I think it's okay to pick up theology for the um, envoy and naval tradition for the envoy because there are potential city states that we want to make friends with. We got the barracks over here in Sousa. I'm going to go ahead and get to work on the armory because I want those extra great general points that comes from the armory. Poland wants to make peace, but I'm refusing. We got the library in Winuku. I think I will prioritize the um, university. Well, no, we're in a war. We should really be building military to sustain the war. So let's double shot this monk over here and then finish him. I'll pull you back to heal in neutral territory. Let's storm forward with our Warak Act to try and secure that kill. And we did indeed secure the kill. Um, so mission accomplished there. I don't feel safe to move forward with my treb yet but I am getting up to that point. And I think this is the kind of war where I'm okay with losing a few units. I can keep the city of Warsaw if I want. It's basically worthless, but I will keep it. Basically, the city exists to very slowly build me builders. Well, it sucks. I hate the city. I wish I could delete it. I might trade it to someone. So I lost a Warwick Act, which is fine. I want to shoot you. You're going to fall back to heal. I'm pushing forward with my trebs. We finished researching siege tactics, which does get us closer to getting line infantry. I don't think we actually have niters, so I don't think that actually helps us, which is unfortunate. In terms of military adventures, it could be okay to get military academy like this. There's nothing wrong with that. Cavalry are actually honestly really quite good, but I don't have horses either. Poland will beg me for peace. I should be able to storm through and wreck them. Let's begin the assault on their capital by positioning forward and then love tapping their, their cities. So again, I am okay with losing units in the pursuit of this war because I believe it will uh, lead to good things for me. Okay, awesome. 15 population in Cusco is giving me plus one era score. I'm going to go ahead and naval tradition is finished. So we have the extra envoys going to move you up here. You're going to attack this guy twice to try and clear him. He has been cleared. We'll finish him off with this crossbow. Then we're going to start bombing the city of Radom. And it is a question of whether or not we want to take this city. I mean, we could, but it is a question that we need to, we need to figure out, we need to answer. I think I'm angry about the city getting raised over here. I don't remember how it got raised. But I think I think that just activated my inner fury. And so I just don't know if I have kindness in my heart anymore. Let's grab civil service. We definitely want to go to diplomatic service as well. We want to be able to get spies to spy on people for military combat strength. Yep, I don't care. Warwick acts are like bombs, basically. You, you throw them forward at the enemy. If you can keep them alive, great. But if you can't, it is not the worst thing in the world. Okay, looks like a knight has entered the fray. One blast and two blasts. Let's move this man at arms up into position to attack next turn. I could double attack the knight with my Warakak. I think I will blast the heck out of that knight and that will get us the kill. The trades are not efficient, but I am able to create units very quickly. Sibon Bolivar has declared war on me. Oh, looks like, looks like, every, look, look, all right, fine. Incan world conquest. Let's do it. It's fine. Nope. That's okay. Let's look, you guys signed your death warrant. All right. This is what you wanted. The AI clearly just wants me to kill them all. Look, I'm just, it's just, it's just, it's the obvious choice. It's what they want. I'm going to give them what they want. It's clearly the thing that they want, right? We're going to keep this city. It's my city now. Anybody who's really, really damaged will chill out here healing. Look, it's no big deal. You guys should have just told me that you wanted to die. I just, I, I didn't understand that that's how you were feeling. Had I known, I would have acted differently. They're already attacking this capital city. But thankfully, I do have a Warakak in here and he will do really good damage against all these units. So let's take out the weak little horseman. Um, do I have pikeman tech? I do not have pikeman tech. So I'm going to go ahead and research military tactics because pikeman would be pretty useful against Gran Colombia right now. I'll also get a crossbowman. Kill that. I didn't spread my religion. Go away, Spain. I killed a missionary, dude. It's not my religion. Just because you're losing your religion 
doesn't mean it's my problem. All right, City took a little bit of damage. I'm going to move the man at arms out here, and his job will be to take out the trebuchet that's doing damage. We definitely need to break the siege of the city. I think the best way to do that would be to attack on this side of things. I'm going to bring more units over here. I keep making those man at arms so you can clog and see if I can bring a warakak back to help. Okay. They came back to shoot, uh, to kill my soldier. That's fine. We got to keep shooting that um, treb because we need to get rid of it. Now you could promote, but I think we don't want to do that. You need to protect that tile. We have reinforcements coming. None of them are pikemen though at the moment. We can get pikemen under construction. Let's research gunpowder. Maybe we can get our hands on niter. Well, we did find Mount Everest, which is, I guess, kind of neat. It's not the kind of thing that we're really looking for, but it's neat. All right, there's Krakow. The capital is taking damage and the walls are almost gone, um, but we do have reinforcements. Let's get rid of the trebuchet because that's the thing that does the most damage to the city. Bring this Warakak up to get another kill. We need to just trim down how many troops they have damaging the city. I feel like the capital should hold here. Absolutely do not military emergency me. No, thank you. But in order for the capital to, to hold here, I need to step you to there. You need to get into the city to give it combat strength. You need to move up here, damage him. Okay, I don't think that they can kill the capital with these units here. I would be surprised. Very surprised. We are breaking Krakow very slowly. It does have full Renaissance walls, which is annoying. So trebuchets are slow to break them. They will break them eventually, though. Oh, wow. They totally captured my capital. Okay. All right. Well, let's counterattack. Make sure we're damaging it. Bring trebuchets over to recover it. It doesn't feel good. Not by a long shot, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Especially because they killed my government plaza, which is quite devastating, actually. But again, not the end of the world. We can recover. I'm going to say no building buildings in the city center because I don't want people to build walls. Otherwise, I don't care. Okay, campus buildings faster. Useful. Kill him. And then you promote faster movement in hill. Shoot once. And then you promote faster movement in hill. So that's like our affinity. You swap with him. Shoot that city to keep it under control. It will rebel, but we don't want it to rebel. We want to recapture it. Let's go for metal casting so we can get bombards eventually. Um, we don't need to assign any of those guys. We can blast the city a little. I'm willing to take losses. Wow, they managed to build walls in like a single turn. Unexpected. The AI never does that. This was like a unique situation that I've never encountered before, that a city under siege was able to finish walls, despite the fact that the city already had walls and then was conquered. A very interesting game. Right, shoot there, shoot there. Doo -doo. Okay, three trebuchets are now pounding the capital that we lost. Um, it does go into unrest in two turns, but I actually really don't want that. So I'm happy to lose units to take it back. We should capture it next turn. Finish that university real quick there, chief. Yeah, I, I guess we need to kill the Kree as well. This is just, this is just turned from, I was having a fun time playing some Civ into the, burn the world to the ground, scorch earth. And I'm okay with it. I'm fine with it. Let's keep blasting. I feel like you're pretty safe. Okay, Kusku will fall beneath the heel of these reinforcing units, but it also means we have to do a lot of rebuilding. On the upside, we get to conquer another player. We get to destroy his empire. Right, let's assign Pingala to the capital. Okay, some pretty, pretty, pretty basic stuff going on here. We got our builder. We're gonna have to start rebuilding all of those missing, what you call them, farms. And even my preserve got crushed. They killed my government plaza and my Diplo Quarter. And then I rebuilt them in the wrong order. <laughs> I put the Diplo Quarter away from the capital. Whoops. Okay, Krakow flipped independent and it is flipping to me. I think I would like to continue training my trebuchets on its walls. And I'm gonna cautiously begin the invasion of Grand Columbia with a wide variety of units, including like things like Pike and Shot and Pikemen. We're gonna have to do a very low tech invasion here. Wow, Leoneros coming from the fog of war to Merc my my guys well that's a shot there that's a shot there jump in that water shoot him twice and then shoot he's very much so surrounded there's the terrace farms coming back online for the capital yeah i think the pike and shot is going to be an important unit and i'm going to take suzerainty of mitla i hate that i don't get to see what it is because i was at war with it at war with its suzerain rather but like this is just how civ plays i was like oh yeah let me have like a really chill tall game i build four cities i go real chill i have a nice time nobody does anything bad we're all just we're all just being chilling we're having a great time it's all it's all vibes man it's all good no problems no nothing and then boom the ai the ai made me choose violence 
And so now I'm building a gigantic carpet of units to send at them. Yeah, I have a few, I have a couple more builder charges to help rebuild the capital. And it's very important though that I keep, I keep the train of units going. One and two and three. Krakow is falling very slowly beneath my um, trebuchet fire. Cartagena de Indias. We've got our line of trebuchets. We're lined up. Beginning the invasion, we have constant reinforcements. This army doesn't need reinforcements right now, so most of my reinforcements, all my reinforcements are going to be going northwest, northeast. We need to start extracting value from the war. Now, faith I don't need, but gold I could. So pillaging this mine here before we take the city of Krakow would be nice. Need builders in Radom, which means I probably need to plug in the builder card so I can start to spam out builders to accelerate the cities that I'm acquiring. That'll formulate as part of our plans, but just right now it's not. The Llaneros are scary. They can kill my units pretty quick. Krakow is crumbling. The fortifications are down to half health. The city is still has seven turns to rebel, so we will be able to grab it. You're going to take volley promotion. You're going to step here and become a pike and shot. You're going to move there. Unfortunately, in my capital, I need to rebuild my infrastructure, which kind of pisses me off, as you can imagine, considering I've already built that infrastructure. It's like having to do homework twice. All right, plus one error score there. Um, we do now have access to military academies, so we can get things like cavalry and line infantry. More importantly, I can pop in here and I can actually build that military academy in Sousa and start that process. I'm going to get you to retreat through the front lines and we're going to begin the siege of Cartagena. Cuirassiers are going to be a really useful unit at this phase of the game as well. So I think pre-building a knight or two is for sure a great move. We also need to be careful not to spend our gold unless it's on getting a great general. But the next great general is industrial era, which is insane relative to our current position on the tech tree, at least. Jesus, those those Llaneros, they just come out of the fog of war and they do serious work. They're very, very strong. Can't let them be trading uh, out units for free, though. It's the opposite of good. 63 combat strength is on par with the Cuirassier. So once we have Cuirassier tech, we'll be able to grind him down a lot easier. He swiveled around the back line with a Lanero to try and take out some of my units. But this Warakak is in position to punish. You need to promote in order to survive. And I will take crew weapons to give you plus seven combat strength when defending, which gives you a higher probability of living longer and thus surviving to fight another day. This Yanero shouldn't be able to escape his fate. I'm going to promote this trebuchet with shells to restore its health, but also give it more combat strength against buildings. And then we will continue to chip away at the fortifications of this city. We are very close to actually taking it. All right, the Yanero ran, but I think I might be able to chase him down or at the very least make him irrelevant to the war. I can attack him again, put him into a compromised position. It's going to be a very, very slow and steady siege of this enemy city. But slow and steady is my middle name. Potato, slow and steady whiskey. Boom. St consistently holding a defensive posture while slowly bombarding down these cities. One war at a time. Just grind them through. Okay, perfect. I managed to position my man at arms to trade for this Llanero. And I'm more than happy to make that trade. This trebuchet has taken enough damage. I'm going to move this one forward and attack. He'll get hit and then I'll promote him. You're going to heal up on the, the back line here. I want to get a pike and shot on this line and I want to start pushing the front line forward with more trebuchets. I got the government plaza in the capital. Let's get the diplomatic quarter as well. We're losing a lot of money. We need to sell some resources if we can. Sell off 100 diplo favor. Sell off some iron. That should stabilize our economy for a little while. We need to get rid of this courser and I think a combination of shots from these crossbows will do it. Now we need to bring the health of Krakow down two turns until the city is broken. So we'll just start slamming it now and we can capture it important thing is we got a bunch of experience from fighting it. So one of my units was killed. Um, my Warakak over here was killed, which is fine. Shoot you, you promote, hide you in the back. It's a minor defeat, which is honestly the best you can hope for in this kind of a situation. We do have knights coming to the front line. This is hopefully the last stand of Krakow. Boom, there we go. Keep city. First things first, get yourself a builder to improve all this land, and then we'll come back and look at you. But yeah, we're probably going to be heading into a dark age, which makes it harder for war. But that's fine. We're going to grind our way through that dark age and we're going to obliterate them. So Poland is now dead. OK, that's what you get for declaring war on me, Poland. Declare war on me. I kill you. England is next. I'm going to ground England into powder. And I'm going to enjoy every single second that I spend doing it. In terms of science, I'm now one of the top sciences people in the game uh, compared to a lot of them. You have a promotion. Let's hide you in that city. Let's push you forward. You shoot him. Come forward and shoot him. Killing enemy units is all about just 
maximizing the total amount of firepower that you can get onto their tile in a single turn. Now, typically, it's going to be using ranged units. Wasn't expecting that Leonero attack, but that is fine because I should be able to catch him. I need plus two combat strength, and then can I get the kill? Perfect. Okay. The, um, the Pike and shots are starting to hit the front line, and they're going to be really, really powerful at holding off the Llaneros. But we are grinding each other down. Step one tile to the right, shoot him. Step two tiles forward, shoot him. You move along. And you want your units to be in a big blob because units get combat strength from having adjacent units um, on the defense. So you want them to be in a nice big blob so they all support each other and make each other harder to kill. Now, they don't, you don't get combat strength against ranged attacks for being in a blob, sadly. But that's not the biggest deal. But like here, this is a nice big blob that's pretty well defended against Yaneros. I don't know why I didn't expect him to try that flanking maneuver. Now we are up against musketmen on the England front, but that's not a big deal uh, because we should have military superiority based on the construction rate of our units. Okay, we lost all our trebuchets on the Grand Columbia front. Again, not important. The important thing is that we're staying in contact with the enemy and preventing from him um, doing anything but building military. I'm going to go for two arms so that we fight. A we get X error score from fighting. And I think getting early oil will make the difference here if we can get to artillery. The nice thing is here, this does offer an opportunity to switch to Warlord's Throne, which I'm going to do. Pillage this. Okay, you do have bombards and you're in the process of building walls. Now, it's probably advisable for me to not go all in on this war in the way that I'm doing it, but I don't care. You, you, you have to really understand. When the AI does this to you, when they when they ruin your game by attacking you nonsensibly, that is that is it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the straw. That's the line. Now I'm all in on warfare. I don't even care if it's a good idea. I don't even care if it's a bad idea. The thing that matters is that I'm pissed off. The AI wanted a reaction, and now they're getting it. Okay, we achieved a builder in Radom. I think the thing to do is to build more builders, plug in the builder card and start chopping out more builders. The Yanero core is a tough cookie. I will just say that. It's definitely a tough cookie, the Yanero core. Jesus, and he's got field cannon cores coming too? Oh my goodness. I refuse to surrender, however. The field cannon core makes it pretty untenable for my trebuchets to be heading forward though. I may have to back up, but this is not a surrender. We're, we're diverting to a new front line. Definitely need to kill this musketman. That much is for sure. Fighting a multi-front war is not a pretty sight, especially when you got Yaneros like rushing forward and you got these field cannons, these field cannon cores. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Did I like accidentally install the make the AI better mod? Holy shit. Let's start getting our own field cannons. All right, we've got our artillery in position to push forward next turn. We're chomping out builder after builder after builder after builder to accelerate this city. Good grief. Are that too strong for me, sir? I was not expecting Yanero cores. That is something I'm willing to admit. My own field cannons will have to help. I'll need theater squares to get through the culture tree faster. Uh, in theory, I guess I could theoretically, I could piece out Simon Bolivar and then look to take out Spain and England, which feels like an okay use of my military. This is why we don't play tall, okay? I want it known. This is why. Okay, I'm going to promote you with combat strength versus district defenses. We're going to begin emplacement. Perfect. You're going to move up to there. You shoot him, shoot him. He's dead now. You chop that. Perfect. Pasture. Farm triangle here is fine. Okay, we got Warlord's Throne. Let's get, let's get the intelligence agency. Take a little bit of time to heal with all these dudes. I will come back for Grand Columbia. Don't you worry. Okay, vengeance will be mine. I definitely need gold. And the best way for me to get gold is to build commercial hubs in places like Radom. Nice, we got the commercial hub completed through chopping. I need someone to protect this while I get a lumber mill. The problem is I just, I wasn't able to build enough military to have momentum in every direction. Poland was an easy kill, but now I'm not able to get enough stuff to the front line with, with um, England. Because I'm just, I'm getting attritioned by being attacked in every direction. So I need to consolidate. I need to focus on one front at a time. And when we do that, we'll be ready to push forward again. Uh, let's get the amphitheater on Ali and Tambo. I need the culture to get to the better military stuff faster. I'm going to take full suzerainty of Mitla. It annoys me that I don't get their thing revealed. Chop here. And then you move here and chop there. There's the aqueduct finish. Let's grab another builder. I'm trying to develop this territory while also simultaneously fighting a war is quite the challenge. We don't want to let this knight escape for free. So I'll bring my Corassia around to hopefully participate. Every few turns, we want to dip in and we want to hit Portsmouth for a very, very small amount of damage just to prevent the walls from getting repaired. 
So even if it's a single crossbowman tapping it, and that's worth it. Okay, they build a round to the north, which is interesting because I have a unit there to, ca to catch them. It's just too many front lines. I am happy to continue to fight, though. There's like a certain, there's a certain thrill in the anger. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a thrill to the warfare. Let's kill that knight with a couple of shots. We want to definitely get rid of the trebuchet because it can do severe damage to this city. So we'll use these. I'm going to chop here to finish that market that we really need the bank. I also need to sell something to get gold. I'll sell off my spare Diplo favor and I will buy some luxury resources to make my economy stronger. And maybe there is a more interesting game had I gone for a more peaceful response to this. We lost a man at arms. That's okay. That was a fairly weak unit that we couldn't do anything to do to save. Let's shoot there and we'll shoot there and we'll shoot there. Can't quite afford that attack. You can step up here. I am going to step you here as a buffer. Oh, I was not expecting him to loop around and to kill my treb. Disappointing because that was actually a pretty highly leveled treb too. But he did die for his sin. Okay, amphitheater completed. We need to get an art museum, but although I'll probably go for the archaeological, but I don't quite, I don't think it's worth it. I guess it kind of is. Two culture is a big deal. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I need things like trebuchets and pikes and shots. We have to get access to oil and my hope is only that I can have oil. I should probably cancel building any siege units in case I do get oil because I don't want them to automatically turn into artillery. All right, I'm going to step forward with this archer to love tap the city of Portsmouth to prevent its walls from getting repaired. We've got a decent number of farms in here. I'm going to switch you to Radom and probably you to Radom as well, but the city needs a little bit more production, whereas you've got plenty of production. So Radom, why don't you take that? We finished a field cannon. I'm going to build a military engineer so I can road up my empire because I don't have very good roads at the moment. And my trade routes have been murdered. At some point, we will, you know, have to do an accounting of all these things and fix the sins of our enemies. Our armies are just getting so spread thin. It's difficult to deal with this. My goodness. We've just been taken apart by the enemy. Any oil, any oil whatsoever. The only oil that is in vision is inside the Cree territory. Maybe it was a mistake to try to push for the military side of things. I definitely feel like killing Poland was like a logical choice, but the invasion of Grand Colombia was definitely a mistake. Think of all the production that I've sh that I've shoved into these things that haven't given me a return on investment. Oof, it's hard. It's hard to think of that. But the problem is once you once you go war, it's kind of hard to divert away because if I keep investing in the war, there's a chance I will I will eventually get a return on investment, right? But if I if I don't continue to invest in the war, there's no chance I get a return on investment. All right, this trebuchet is now level two. Let's get rid of this treb and then hopefully back up with you. We got our intelligence agency. Let's build a couple traders and a spy. I'm going to put a spy in Leeds. I'm going to peace out Spain. Spain isn't willing to take peace. I'm going to focus on killing England and then we'll turn around and we'll take on Spain. Jesus, I feel like I've just created my own disaster save file. Okay. I think Krakow's got enough builders. I will get a couple X. I'll get another builder just to make sure that all the tiles that I want in here are repaired, upgraded, etc. And then we'll go ahead and start repairing the city and rebuilding it. So my strategy is to just grind down the enemy with a constant series of attacks, throw my economy at them and pray that my superior human intellect allows me to, vi to achieve victory questionable as to whether or not that intellect is actually superior but you know these are the great questions that we need to answer i'm going to research steel to make all of my uh built my cities more easily defendable when you research steel all of your cities get automatic 400 cup fortification strength and that sounds like it would be real nice right about now we're advancing with our trebuchets we've got the city surrounded pike and shots are storming forward as well it's quite a bit of pillageable stuff in here that would help us get back into the game I do feel like we've fallen behind now pretty significantly. All right, blasting down Portsmouth. I forgot, does building a road actually cost a military builder charge? Because if so, that's very, very questionable. I am going to go ahead and build the university. It's six signs per turn, which is a pretty significant amount. And I also really need gold, but I don't know if I can justify that. I'm going to put a trader into Krakow and trade with the capital to try and speed up the rate at which Krakow will actually contribute to my empire. Yeah, I think the big, the big mistake that I made, also I lost another trebuchet. A big mistake I made was, was trying to fight on too many fronts at once. I just need to shave these walls down. It has a special ability to prevent it from being pillaged. We are about to capture Portsmouth though. That will get us a 20% production boost across our empire. Thanks to the Warlord's throne that we switched into. I'm going to research nationalism now so we can start combining our units into cores. Considering all of the things that have gone wrong for me this game, particularly in terms of strategic resource, a, a, acquisition. It's pretty surprising that I'm still going. I hate that building roads with 
military engineers uses a charge. It's very stupid. Considering building um, railroads doesn't use a charge. There's Abraham Lincoln and Tamar of Georgia. Met another couple of civs. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to hold this city with loyalty very effectively. That is not going to stop me from trying, however. Can we capture it? Perfect. Okay, Portsmouth is captured. Let's take a look at the loyalty situation here. Minus 20. All right. What say, what say if we kept it? Minus 15. Five from a garrison unit during occupation. Okay, what if we plugged Victor in there? Now we're at minus five. This is pretty manageable. All we have to do is get the pressure from citizens to change and potentially get amenities in here. So I'll slowly work on a monument. And it would be good if we could get some extra loyalty in here, probably from Limitanier. Um, I tell you what, I'm willing to spend the money to get rid of Stratagos. Plug in Limitanier. That plus two loyalty doesn't seem like much, but it does make a difference here. Now it's only minus three. So we have a lot more time to play around with when it comes to figuring out what we're going to do. I have, this is probably the most units I've ever lost playing Civ. It's actually insane just how effective the AI has been at actually scoring kills on me. And they always seem to have the counter unit for what I'm doing. Like, I'm shocked at their ability to generate this much military from nothing, it feels like. There is oil here, though. There is oil, and I need it. If I can get that oil, it changes the game for me. I'm going to move this trader over to Radom to help this city get up and running. I say up and running. I mean, the city is already up and running quite a bit, but I want it to be better. I need gold and I need pillages. I'm going to move you to Birmingham now. I need that scouting info. Oof, another unit dies. Wow, it's fucking shocking how effective they are. They never score this many kills on me. L literally never have I ever seen the AI nail so many of my units to the wall to the point where I can't even reinforce fast enough. Like, dude, look at this storm of steel that's coming through. Jesus. All right, we need to play it very slowly, very progressively, one step at a time, not giving up an inch for free. I only give inches for free to your mom. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, we got the university in South so we can go back to manufacturing military. I do think Pike and Shot is the thing. It holds the front line for us. All right, we're shooting that unit. He's dead. Let's have a look. So we're fighting England. England's military score is still fairly high. It's not super high. We absolutely have to break leads and not just break it. We have to break through it. All right, we got the bank in Radom. So there's a decent amount of cash coming through here. Um, let's sell off our Diplo favor for cash per turn as well as our amenities for cash per turn. We'll sell off the iron for cash per turn as well. We are now getting niter, which is a big deal because it means potential bombards down the road. I'm not sure where I'm getting that niter from. Okay, it looks like it's underneath the campus here in Portsmouth, which is honestly huge. 12 more niter. I wonder if I could, well, if I purchase niter, I, I can purchase luxuries, but if I purchase niter, I'm in bad shape. And I, I don't think I can afford to do that. Being able to upgrade to artillery would be amazing. But if I... Oh, how is this 80? I don't even know. How is it 80? That's my question. The problem is if I finish this, I might not be able to upgrade to bomb to, to, to bombard. So I may have to stick back here and go for something like industrialization while I just play patiently with the niter stuff. Okay, do I want an encampment here? And if so, do I start it now or do I start producing military? If I go for the encampment, I could get a theater square. It would get me extra culture. It would get me to nationalism and mobilization faster. And I am a little bit behind on culture. So I think I will go for the theater square. They're that important. Like they're super, super important. Culture. We always just play the grind. Play the grind. That's that's where a human player has the advantage over the AI is in the grind. The slow grinding down of two armies, like mashing each other's faces together. Okay, we'll chop here. And we'll chop here. It's a pike and shot to assist the front line. All right, we're up against line infantry now. Damn, I lost another unit. I'm genuinely shocked at how good the AI is in this game. They like coordinated an attack against me to, to knock me down a rung on the civilizational ladder. And it's taken all of my power to fight back. To just kill one of them who is even like doing... He's, this is one of the worst AIs in the game. What is happening? I can't believe this is happening to me right now. Am I even good at this game? This is, this is what's going through my head. I'm having a crisis of faith here. I thought I was the best, man. I thought I was the best. I believe in the grind. I am the grind. Right, we got access to cartography and we got a spy into Birmingham. We're going to go ahead and tell him to do a listening post. Now, if you, the reason we do listening posts is if you look here, we're getting no advantage or disadvantage from diplomatic visibility. 
However, if I come in here and I set this guy to listening post immediately, we now get plus three combat strength intel on the opponent's movement because we're doing an intel mission on him. That basically overcomes the deity combat strength bonus. Not quite, but like almost. I'm curious to see if I can get a kill on this bad boy. It's going to be close. I mean, he's really hurt. So the total amount of damage he can do is limited. Okay, line infantry. We need to surround this city. We've got the units moving up slowly but surely it's happening. Got the theater square in here. Pop down that amphitheater, another plus two uh, culture per turn. Hopefully next turn we can begin the invasion of the next city. I refuse to take peace. Under no circumstances will I surrender when victory is so close at hand. All right, we need to get the trebuchets in range of the city. And the field cannons can deal with the enemy reinforcements. The trebs are in, at least most of them. All right, spy completed here. I'm going to send him to Valencia so we can start getting scouting info on Spain. All right, and this is why we need so many trebs to attack at the same time. A single city shot on this trebuchet took away almost the majority of its health. But then we can do a promotion that gives it health and better defense. And we don't have to worry about it. I'm going to bring my cavalry to here. We need to pillage for gold. That's very, very important. Move you up. You're going to become a bombard now. Excellent. Let's kill this guy. Move in here. You're in support positioning. And we're building the arc. The arc of violence around, around Leeds now. You've heard of the arc de triomphe. How about the arc de violence? Yeah. Always expect a little bit of a counterattack. Field cannons are handling the enemy. I think I think doing damage now is more important than promoting. And killing him with my own cuirassier is important. You need to retreat to a safe distance to heal. Do you take over the city garrison? Low tech or low or out of tech units, i.e. units that are kind of like behind the times, really great for really great for acting as garrisons as your army advances. So I, I also need to stream builders in here to rework all this land to make it useful for my empire. Blast and blast. Done some decent damage to Leeds. Let's get on top of that aqueduct so we can pillage it. Pillaging is going to be an important way that I maintain momentum here now that I've finally gotten somewhere. As our roads, which is why I'm actually sacrificing this military engineer for a road. Okay, she's begging me for peace. This feckin' district finished. That's okay. Who does it belong to? Newcastle upon Tyne. That sucks. I do have a bombard in range of Leeds now. So it did 16 defenses worth of damage in comparison to 15 of a leveled up trebuchet. You've taken too much. So let's put a crossbowman in your spot and then retreat you to somewhere safe. You've taken too much damage. So step back and take garrison. Shoot there. Pillage this for the culture. So we can get nationalism and start to combine units together. You shoot there. Pillage this. You shoot. Get that damage in. You step forward to pillage that mine. The line infantry is leaving the city. I'm going to combine these two guys together. No, I should combine them together when they're upgraded to bombards. For now, they can act independently. Um, I'm going to disassemble this first so I can chop here. And what I'll be chopping out is a builder. And I'm going to put a little road here so that my units can reinforce a couple turns sooner to the front line. Nice. So we have nationalism now. Let's head for civil engineering. Civil engineering, scorched earth and mobilization. We're going straight for military techs. And now the city of Sousa should be able to recruit cores. So I'll get started on the Corassier core. Uh, and it can do that because it has its military academy already. We unlock mass production, but it doesn't really matter for us. We're working on industrialization to get production from mines. We're going to blast you with this guy. You took damage, which was your goal. I'm going to move you to there, move you here. Step forward with this field cannon for the purpose of shooting and gaining a bit of experience. You're pillaging that mine. You're moving in to take over the occupation and surrounding of the city. And we're slowly but surely chipping away at the defenses of England. This is what I'm talking about. And as you kill, as you pillage, you start to snowball. Uh, once we get access to this oil, the game completely opens up for us. But that's the thing. We have to get to access of that oil. Like, that's a, that's a this belongs to Newcastle upon Tyne as well. All right, we got some pike and shots in Radom. Let's go ahead and change our policies. We're going to plug in, I mean, conscription would be nice, but we're going to plug in, where is it? Where is it? Grand Army. I'm also going to take a short break to go pick up divine right so that I can produce cuirassiers with higher alacrity. We got the culture here in Krakow. So I think the amphitheater is all we need. If I look at my army and what I'm what I'm lacking over here is just a lot of melee. So more pikes and shots to hold the, to, to, to fight on the front is what I definitely need down here. I just I just don't have enough units that can clog the battlefield for my uh, for my siege and my rangers. Clog strats. Enemy field cannon approached. 
Uh, we cannot let that get into the city. So we need to push around the city with all of our units. Okay, you're vulnerable to Newcastle upon Tyne. Might be necessary. We need to kill those units before they get into the city. There we go. The city's getting blasted. Repair the furs. Let's combine these crossbowmen together and then I'll upgrade them to a field cannon. All right, my poor cuirassier took damage that I was hoping it didn't have to, but the field cannon did retreat, so it's no longer protecting leads, thus costing me units. Yeah, it sucks that we're going to lose a little bit. Well, actually, you have a promotion. Let's take the garrison promotion and then get both you guys to step up here to pillage these while we blast the city for all it's worth. I could take it this turn, not quite take it this turn, which is fine because it does give me a chance to get an extra pillage in that I'm looking forward to. All right, I do think it is worth it to pillage with you and we will pillage with you, even though I will lose you for that pillage. Translating you into gold is more valuable to me, particularly if I'm able to get my hands on more niter. All right, leads now belongs to me. There's divine right. Um, divine right will allow me to build cavalry, particularly cuirassiers more effectively. Uh, we are going to keep this city. Loyalty is grim. However, I can take Victor, reassign him to Leeds, and then I can take a different governor like Amani and assign her to Portsmouth. And now Portsmouth has positive loyalty. Leeds has slightly negative loyalty, but we should be able to stabilize the city. We are going to need to deal with this encampment here, but I think combining these units together is going to form a part of that strategy. I'm going to plop out Grand Army so I can plug in Professional Army and get some upgrades on these basic units. And then I will very quickly research something cheap like mercantilism to switch back. Although I can just pay gold to switch back soon. So unfortunately, I think Newcastle upon Tyne has to be our next target, um, which means we have to break through this fortification here. But I will say this, considering what happened to me last episode and the number of players who declared war on me and the number of units that they threw at me and the quality of those units, the fact that I'm still standing and I'm potentially on a roll here to get production, uh, or rather to, to conquer, and I'm getting a 20% production boost from um, Warlord's Throne across my empire. I think I'm in a position whereby I can recover from the devastating blow that I was dealt. I really wish I could have just sat on four cities and played Super Sim City, but that is not what the AI had in store for me. So I want to thank you guys very much for watching this episode. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.